some days I just feel like <clears throat> you know I'm I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm going, I'm going, I'm moving, I'm moving. You know, I know where I'm going, I know what I want. And on days like this, I just I don't want anything. I don't want to do nothing. It wasn't a hard day at work. It's pretty straightforward, simple. Three hours, seven to ten, twenty. Cash sharing. The days before that it was it's about to be a new year and a day or so. It's eleven thirty eight right now. It's the thirtieth of December. I don't know, I don't know. I kinda I just so I just feel confused. You know, I pray for that. <clears throat> it's like, it's just nothing. It's just nothing makes sense anymore, really, you know? I'm just in this place of just what am I doing? Where am I going? Who am I? What's happening? Like feelings, like, oh, I want to feel angry, or I want to feel jealous, or I want to feel grief, or I want to feel happy. You know, like this, nothing makes sense. Like everything is like fruit everywhere. And I'm kind of like floating in this eternity. And I get to pluck fruit off the tree and every fruit is different. What do you want to feel? You know? And it's like these things that are happening in me and you know, memories or, you know, thoughts about people and how I can choose to think about something, therefore have an emotional reaction. Like I could choose to treat people the way I want to, good or bad, or indifferent, whatever. I can choose whatever I want, but not every choice is beneficial. You might get a different reaction I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. I just, just kind of just, I'm in this place, I feel like where I'm, I know, but I don't know at the same time. Like I, I have, <clears throat> I don't know, like I don't know, but I can, I can choose to know I can choose to label it. That's how I feel. And by me labeling it, I can have an emotional feeling. Like everything. I can label whatever I want. 
I can perceive things however I want to perceive them. I can, I can say, okay, this is good and this is bad. I can re, re rearrange things in my reality. So I don't really, I don't really know what I'm perceiving. Like I, I'm a cashier. I see people come in and out, and I can, I can choose to label them as an enemy, my enemy or my friend or whatever, and then I can have an emotional interaction with that. It's weird. I don't know what's happening to me. Like I said, I don't know if this is true or not. I just know that's what... I know that I don't know, but if I want to know, it's not that it's that I'm that it's something that I'm discovering more that I'm labeling. Does that make any sense? It's like I'm not saying people don't exist. I'm just saying how I choose to make them exist. How I, whether I choose to make them relevant or not. That's how I feel like. When I'm angry, I'm usually thinking of angry things or making it into something angry. Or perceiving it, choosing how I want to perceive the circumstance when it when it either is or isn't. I don't I don't really know. <clears throat> Some person walks in the store and I can label them however I want to label them. I can label them as being good. And if I label them that way, then I treat them that way. But if I don't like the way they dress or act, I can I can label them whatever that is, and then I start to treat them that way. It's weird. It's like it's like it happens here in my heart. In my mind, in my heart, like they work as one to <clears throat> and intercedes into into something. It's weird. It's so weird. So it's like, but I'm aware of this now. I feel like I'm aware of what I'm what I'm thinking, whether it's here or here. I'm I'm aware of what's what I'm cho what I'm choosing. I'm aware of my choices, you know. And then, like, let's say if I label someone as being, like, how they dress or act or look, whatever. If I label them as a, a negative, in a negative way, then that's how I choose to interact with them in that way. Like today, like, my boss, like, I thought about what he believes and I don't believe that but based off of that I chose to see him through that lens of all of my thoughts about him and it I started to treat him according to how I was according to a list of things that I I thought that he was or was not doing or right and wrong. It was weird. And then, so it's like, okay, whatever he believes or whatever. And it's just like, how do I still see him as a human being regardless of what he believes? But stay true to what I believe.
I don't know, man. I don't know what's happening. Like I said, I feel like I'm just I'm floating in this. I'm floating. I'm floating in my own conscience. It's like I'm in. I am me, but I'm not me at the same time. I'm. I'm constantly moving through life, making choices. And 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 discerning what right and wrong is. And I'm seeing colors of moving around. I'm seeing nature move. I mean, I was at work, now I'm here. Whether I'm here, I see and hear my wife moving in the background, or I'm at work seeing people moving around, and I'm thinking to myself, like, are they seeing what I'm seeing? Like, why am I a human being? And who are they? And why are they human beings? And why am I interacting with them? And why are they interacting with me? Like, why are we who we are? Like, do, does nobody question that? Like, we're all humans. That's kind of weird. You know what I mean? To me, I'm like, they're human. They look human. I look human. They don't look like me. I don't think I look like them, but I'm not outside myself to see myself, to know what I lo actually look like other than what the mirror tells me or what I tell the mirror to tell me. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's so weird. Things are so, things are getting weird. They're getting really, really weird for me anyways in my journey of faith. Like, what am I perceiving is what I'm saying. What am I perceiving? Why am I perceiving them this way? And how are they perceiving me? Is it, are we seeing through the same lens? Are we seeing the same thing on both sides? Or are we actually seeing two different things? Like grab two people, boom. This person thinks they have their own way of thinking about everything. And this person has their own way of thinking about everything. I'm a cashier. They're a customer. We're perceiving each other. The other day, I had someone try to fight me. Nowhere in my mind was I thinking of fighting someone. Where did that happen in this person's mind or heart? And it was just, it was just weird. I mean, it was just, it's weird. Life is weird, you know? How do people perceive me? What do people see about me? And how am I perceiving them? Like I, after that, you know, my boss showed me a footage of the guy and I, tonight, and I just thought to myself about what, whatever that was, that interaction. And I, and I, and when I saw the video, I just, I didn't want to look at him and I, and I saw him through the lens of how he treated me. Same thing with customers. If they treated me badly and then they come into my line or I see them in the store or around town, I label them that way. I see them <clears throat> as an enemy. I see them through those lenses. And then I start attaching more, more things about them that may not even be true. But meanwhile, someone else can perceive that same person and see them like probably being an awesome person or they love them or like them or whatever. But I had a bad experience with this person, so now they're this. And if I want to, I'm going to add a bunch of other stuff that, like I said, may or may not be true. And then I hear things from other people talking about this person and adding on stuff. I'm thinking to myself like... Does that person even know that? Like, do I know what people think about me? Well, probably not. I'm sure I don't know a lot of things. I probably don't know everything my wife thinks about me. Other people. And are they true? Probably not. 
So I just, I kind of, I think about how I perceive the world anyways. And, and I don't want to go too far into thinking about what other people think about me. It's just what, what I, I'm learning that I have control over how I think about people. At least that's how it feels. I mean, it, when I think about a person that I did not think highly of, he may not even be thinking about me that way. But I think about that him that way based off of whatever experience or made up jargon. And I'm seeing him through that lens. Like, you could take a celebrity or someone that everybody knows and not actually personally know them. The, the media can portray someone to, to be this kind of person. Let's just take Donald Trump, right? Because everybody should know who that person is. And then none of it may not even be true. So it just makes me think, like, how does... God want us to see each other. I remember the movie, the last Jesus movie that came out, modern day one. It was, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of short films and other films, but one of the big ones that came out was Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix played Jesus. Those of you who don't know him, he played the recently new Joker movie. And I think the only Joker movie recently is 2019 this year. So they might come out with a bunch more. So him, I did not, I've seen his other movies. So in this idea, I'm kind of thinking to myself, okay, I've seen him in all these other movies. And I'm thinking like, when I read the Bible, who do I see and what do I see? I'm like, I don't see Jesus. I see Joaquin Phoenix and all his other movies. I'm like, oh, he did a terrible job. Oh, they didn't stick to the Bible. But the more I learn about God, and I've just been reading the Bible, reading through Psalms, there's this line. I didn't like it because it wasn't biblically whatever. But the more I, like I said, learn about God, there's this line in the movie where the, the woman says, or Mary Magdalene, it's called Mary Magdalene, that's the movie. And she says to Jesus, being Joaquin Phoenix, I want you to see me as I am. Basically, don't judge me. And it just, it just, it, it, it kind of painted a clear picture to me. It, it's just this, this sense of just, this sense of purity, this sense of just unconditional, you know, everyone's talking about who she is and all these bad things she's done and all this stuff. We know that biblically in the movie, there's, she's making a lot of like, she has a lot of people who don't, who have a, a lot of negative perspective of who she is. But then she, in the movie, she just looks at Jesus and Jesus looks at her and he says, I don't see any of those things. All I see is. I would interpret love. All I see is love. All I see is, is um, myself. All I see is myself. All I see is a reflection of me. A reflection of me, Jesus is saying, I see myself in you, Mary Magdalene. And Mary Magdalene looks at Jesus and is basically saying, when I look at Jesus, all I see is in a sense of myself, but I see that I'm loved, you know? And it's just this idea of, you know, the colors and the, the, the knowledge beyond all the knowledge and the colors and the, in, in, in whatever the shadows, you know, uh, the lenses beyond the, all the kaleidoscopes, you know, you look through a lens, it's like a, I want you to kind of just think of just kind of like, for me, it's like life is like, there's all these abstract colors everywhere. And when I see people, I see these colors and I see, um, distortion, 
Does that make sense? Distortion being like sin, you know, being like shadows and on people's faces. I see people's faces. They just look like they're covered in darkness and in shadows. And I don't, and I look at people and they don't really look at me. And it's just, it's just like, I see shame, you know, this picture right here. It's like shame, you know, or, or, uh, uh, like looking up to this, when I see people looking over, over up like that, it's kind of, I see pride or like lifting up their head pride, you know, and it's like, I see these things in people as they walk about, you know, not to say it's true. I'm just saying that's what I see. But when I see you, you straight on eyes to eyes, I see, um, surrenderance. I see I see God in a sense, not God Almighty there, but I see God being, um, we're all made in the image of God. You know, I see unconditional. I see, uh, I see, I, you know what I mean? I just, I see just clean, just purity, purity. You could see me, you see me, I see you face to face, eye to eye, but everything else, it's like distortion and all this stuff. And it's like, what am I labeling? What am I premeditative thoughts towards people or unforgiven thoughts towards people or my own experiences about people and, and, and all these things are choices. Like how we perceive the world is a choice. We're choosing to perceive people these ways. We're choosing to perceive the world this way. And I think that Jesus is saying, I came to make those see blind and those blind see being, I came to change your eyes inside out and outside in. I, I came to revert what you see is actually your heart. Well, how you perceive people is you're perceiving that you're you're perceiving your own heart on the inside is reflecting the outside. You're perceiving people this this way is because that's what is going on in here. And I came to reverse that. So what you see on the outside is happening in your own heart and until you repent of what you see, you know, then this, your eyes, the windshield will never be cleaned. Unless you repent from your heart, unless you change from your heart, then I will, God will not clean what you see on the outside. That's, that's how I, I, pers that's how I see things. That's how I, that's what I'm getting from this. Because what you're labeling on the outside is what's actually happening in the inside. Your your heart is your own heart is labeling what you see. You're labeling people and you're condemning people and you're doing these things and you're shifting and you know and and he talks about renewal of the mind and the heart being softened, you know, and reversing that. And basically saying you can, you have a choice to how you perceive the world around you and you can re-change how you think. You can readjust your own thoughts, you know. So Jesus is saying, you know, you, if I clean your heart, clean the inside of the cup, clean your heart, and then the outside will be clean. You will see people the way God sees people, you know, but until you clean your heart, the outside will never be clean. You know, what you're perceiving is yourself in a sense, you know, you've got one person who knows and loves everybody. And then you have another person who hates someone, else, everybody. What's the difference? They both, they both live in the same world. I've known things with where this person loves everybody and they had a terrible life. And this person didn't have that bad of a life. 
and they hate everybody. What's the difference? This person has a relationship with Jesus and is getting their heart is heart cleaned out. So their perception of the world is becoming more um, clear. But this person doesn't have a relationship with God and their perception of people is getting more dirty. Both walk into a grocery store or wherever they're at, standing next to each other. Man, there's, people are just amazing. I love people. And this person says, I hate everybody. Everyone's mean. So it's just this idea of like, if you want to go to heaven, Jesus says the kingdom of God isn't over there and it's not over there. It's right here in our hearts. I know it's kind of jumping off track and kind of saying like the Buddhist and all that stuff. Well, sort of, I mean, but it's not Buddhism because the only person who can forgive your sins is Christ. And the only person who offers up the Holy Spirit, Buddhism doesn't have a Holy Spirit. They don't have a teacher. I'm learning these things off the Holy Spirit is teaching me. So now I'm who is doing these things. It's God who's doing them through me. Heaven is in the midst of us. It's right here. It's the heart. You know, so, I mean, that's, that's just what I, that's, I don't know. I don't know if this is true or not, but that's, I think it's true. I think it's true. I think, I think God gave us choice in the choices. You can redefine right and wrong for yourself, right? Or you can come to the Bible and I will teach you what right and wrong really is. Being your life is a reflection of you. You're perceiving your 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 perception of the world is a reflection of your own heart. You can condemn people and you can uplift people. You can redefine how you want to perceive the world. And that is your truth. That is your truth. That is your heaven or hell. If you hate your life, it's because that's who you are. If you hate people, it's because that's who you are. That's what you see. You see you're actually perceiving what you're projecting. You're pro this is the projector. And, and this, this is the film. Your film is your thoughts. Your thoughts, your heart is projecting your, your eyes are projecting your heart. The way you see the world is you right here. If you don't love people, it's because it's you. Jesus is saying, but if you want to be saved from yourself and find out what real right and wrong is, you have to surrender your way of thinking, your whole heart. You have to surrender your heart to what the Bible says. Jesus said, didn't I call you guys gods? But the scriptures cannot be um, changed. And Satan lied, but he kind of didn't lie. You would be like God. You will know right and wrong. But he, it was basically we could redefine those things. So within the scripture, within the biblical format of it, it's you can you you can come to the real truth. And when we come to the real truth, we have to surrender every way we every way of the way we thought. And we have to really look at our own heart the whole time. You cannot look at others and say it's because of them. You have it's a search right, right here. Here and here. They work as together. And as we read the Bible, he starts to cleanse us right here starts to cleanse our minds and we start to he's tearing down the stronghold so like it's like a you have a dirty windshield wipe the dirty windshield and you need to be cleansed but the windshield wiper can never clean it the real 
cleansing needs to happen here. And the more the heart gets cleansed, the more clear the picture, the image of the world becomes. That's, I guess that's how I feel. It's, we have a choice to how we label the world around us. If you think of someone that you don't like, you're thinking of them that way. I guarantee you their loved one isn't thinking of them that way. Maybe it's a spouse or a parent or a child. It's you who's perceiving them that way. You're choosing to perceive them that way. You're choosing to label them that way. To label them as being unloved. To label them as being the way you perceive them. But you can change the way you perceive them if you want to. You can change the way you perceive the world around you if you want to. If you're willing to learn. And that's what Jesus says. He says, you have to become like a child. You have to become humble. You have to be willing to be to learn, willing to learn. Willing to change your way of thinking to see something that you didn't see about that person or about the thing that you see in the world. You have to humble yourself. Humbling yourself, you mean, mean also could mean you have to surrender your normal pattern of thinking. You normally think about cops or whomever or things this way. You can re you can rechain you can readjust those things. You can readjust your belief systems. That's what Jesus is saying. You can readjust your beliefs. But do you want to? So not everything we perceive is entirely bad. Yes, there's some definitely obvious things that other people do that we can perceive. But if we can learn about not just look at one situation from the pers this perspective and say, that is this. Because there are so many different perspectives about what you've seen may not be entirely the entire picture. And God can see all all around the circumstance through the person's heart, their eyes, through the other person and all this other stuff. That's how I feel anyways. I, I feel like, I don't feel like I, I just, I don't, I feel like, I feel like I put myself in the circumstance. Like my life, my whole life. I've been feeling, I feel like, I'm I'm seeing the world as I'm painting it with my thoughts and therefore having an emotional interaction an emotional an emotional like you know what I mean I'm painting it with a thought and then I'm feeling it, feeling that way about how I painted it. When I can change the thoughts, I can reach, I can change them and then I can have that feeling come in. I'm thinking about my thoughts and I'm finding that not all of my thoughts are good. So I'm choosing to change them, change my beliefs. I believed that, for example, cops were bad. I believed that because that's what was sewn into me. But now I'm realizing that that's not entirely true. Same thing with anything else because of this person treating me badly or because of what I've heard about people saying about that or this in a negative, any negative experience, I'm learning that that's not entirely true. You can, 
you can change what you believe about, and that changes what you perceive. But you have to be willing to want that change. <sighs> yeah, because the you know, I saw a videotape of this dude that wanted to fight me, and I started to re-experience that again and again, and, and that anger came back, and and then I realized. I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to see him this way. I don't want to perceive that this way. I want to change that. Pray for that person. Pray for yourself. And, and, and look for the good. Seek the good in that person or scenario or whatever. Pray for yourself. Pray for the person and seek the good. It's a seeking process, not of just seeking God. You're seeking God in the circumstance, but you're also seeking the goodness in that person or whatever in that circumstance or whatever. Like, I'm like, so I'm perceiving these things and I'm looking at the world that I live in. I'm saying, I'm building this world and I have a choice to how I build it. I have a choice to what I lift up and what I tear down. I have a choice to how I'm looking at the whole, my, 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 my life, my past, my future, my present, everything. And I can readjust. I can change it. Wow. This is what God wanted to give me, the Holy Spirit. He wanted us to realize. He never left us from the fall, from the garden. He never left us. We've just redefined what we are perceiving about nature. So it's kind of the idea of like, just because I don't believe that he's here, how do I, how do I make this into a, a, a perfect analogy where you can get this? Just because you don't see something doesn't, does, doesn't make it not relevant, doesn't make it not exist. Because you don't know something exists doesn't make it non-existent. So it's this idea of when, when, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, they saw God. God was right there. Boom. And he says, don't eat of that fruit because the moment you do, you will be cut off from me. So they took of the fruit, and since they took of the fruit, their perception of God was cut off, being um, like, like they're like, yes, they were aware of him, but as we look from the beginning of the fall. To the towards today, we see that people more and more and less and less believe in God exists. Is what I'm saying. So I'm trying to draw a picture here. I'm trying to illustrate something and say, as an example, they took of the fruit, they ate it, and it was kind of like the Men in Black. Remember, they flash the flasher and they forget, right? I guess that's that's what it would kind of be like. It was it would kind of be like you ever forget something and you don't know what you forgot. It's kind of like that with God. Like people forget God exists. But that doesn't mean he doesn't exist. Just because you forget that God exists or you're unaware of his existence or you don't care about his existence doesn't make him not relevant. 
it makes you ignorant. I mean, that's kind of like if someone was raised and no one ever taught them that they, about their eyes and how it works, their eyes and their ears and their mouth, right? And they use it every day. They use their ears, they use their eyes, and they and they use their mouth. But no one ever taught them how it works. Does that make it less relevant? Does that make the you have ears? And they'd be like, what are ears? You have eyes. What are eyes? You have a mouth. What's mouth? You have breath. What is that? Does that make it not relevant because they don't know? No. It just makes them ignorant to its existence. So there are things in your body that work, right? There's a better illustration. Your organs and, 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 and your tendons and every interesting things, you know, chemicals that work in your body, bloodstreams. Just because you don't know how it works, does it make it not functional? Absolutely not. You know how to stand and, and walk and breathe and all these things, and you don't even think about those things. That's the same thing about God. God exists, even though we choose not to give him attention. Your brain works, even though you don't know how it works. You know, and that's I'm gonna I think I'm gonna end on somewhere around here. And that's that's what I'm learning right now. I'm learning that I can. Just because I was unaware of it doesn't mean that it wasn't possible. There are things that you and I and we can do that we're unaware of that I believe now. I believe this now. And just because we're unaware of it doesn't make it po not possible. And I think this idea of faith is what he's saying is it's a constant letting go process being a child doesn't know one day what it can do. It doesn't know that today it can't a, ch a baby can't walk. But because it doesn't know it can walk, does that make it less incapable of walking? No. Cuz one day that child will be able to walk, run, sprint, hurdle, fly jets, you know. It doesn't, it's ignorance today or not knowing what it could do doesn't make it incapable of doing it in the future. And I think that's the journey that we're on. Wherever you're at in your life, just because you don't feel or know or whatever reason that you can do something does not take away the fact that if you pursue it, you will accomplish it. A child gets up and falls and crawls and tries every day, can't walk, can't walk. And if that child gives up trying to walk, then yes, that child will not be able to walk. But if that child continues to pursue its, its um, pursuit of walk, before it knows, it will be able to walk on its own. And I say all this to say... I'm starting a ministry. I already did it. It's called I Am Love Church. And I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm scared. And I'm, I just, I just, there's all these things. And I look at my past, my present, and my future. I don't know what it looks like. I'm overwhelmed and I'm underwhelmed. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling, why I'm feeling. I don't, I don't think I need to know. All I need to know is what I know now, as I know it. And when that time has passed, I will know the next thing. 
like a child. It figures out how to take the first step. And then it's trying to take the next step because it's fell a million times. It's fallen. He or she, and, and it finally takes the second one. It's like, okay, I got this part. And then before it, he or she knew, eventually they don't even think about walking and how they walk anymore. They just do it naturally, run and sprint. And I think that's just the way of our faith too. I mean, today we don't know what God's doing. We don't know why he's doing it. We don't know why we were born, whom we were born with or married to whom we're buried with. And we don't know a lot of things. But eventually, we will finally know why. So that's just how I feel right now. I don't know why. But I'm willing to find out. I'm willing to have faith and keep moving forward. It's scary. But it's also exciting. And I want to move forward in faith with you guys. And find out what God has for all of us. Thank you for watching. God bless.